Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are doing a really fun online internet trend that I'm kind of late to the bandwagon, but you know, like, at least I did it, and I think it's gonna be really fun to do. So you guys might have seen a couple of different images floating around the internet of basically people on Twitter or Instagram asking their community to help them build X creature. So the two I'm specifically talking about is the drawing a dragon challenge and drawing a unicorn challenge. So I posted both of these images on my Twitter, which you can follow at kmckeg if you guys wanna keep up with posts and updates and things. But anyway, I posted both of these on my Twitter for you guys to send replies to and help me build these creatures. So full disclosure, uh, the dragon one I posted quite a while ago and I just haven't been able to get around to it. So I went through ahead of this video and tried to figure out the order that the comments were in. So I'm just gonna run through that because Twitter does weird things. If you post something a really long time ago and then try to go back to the comments, it like moves the time that they were posted. It, it sucked. Let's just, we'll go through and I'll show you which ones you guys picked for dragons. Okay, so on Twitter, I posted this image for make a dragon. So basically how it works is the first comment was the eyes, second comment was the horns, third comment was color, pattern, so on and so forth. So I went through and double checked the order of these comments and I'm gonna run through what we got for our suggestions. So first off for the eyes, we had two come in basically almost at the same time. So I'm gonna just use both of them. We had uh, cuttlefish eyes from Jace and eyes like a ice demon from Dolly B Creation. So we'll be combining both of those. And then for horn type from Sleepy, we have horns like those cows that have really thick and long horns. And he included a picture and oh boy, those are big horns. <laughs> and then a uh, third comment for color slash pattern, we got the diamondback rattlesnake pattern from a normal. And then fourth comment from Mitsuki, we have the wing type, which is a dragonfly wing. And then fifth comment for the main, we had two come in basically at the same time again. And one of them was from Dragon Lord that said a main like Ida's hair or from Jess, a main like Haku's hair from Spirited Away. So I'm just gonna kind of combine the two of that one. For the tail, we had a suggestion from Cohen to do a bunny tail. For the skin type from AJ, we have skin like peacock feathers. So that will be interesting. And then finally, for the body type from Kiki, we have the body of a badger. So with all of those suggestions of mine, this dragon is going to be very interesting. Like I'm already trying to picture in my brain how to combine these things. So let's jump in and get some sketches going because wow, this is gonna be a, an interesting combo. All right, let's jump in to this dragon mash amalgamation of a creature like, Wow, you guys were not easy on me when sending me these different suggestions. Uh, it's quite the combo to say the least. And you guys gave me just quite the, I guess just quite diverse suggestions. Uh, I was a little intimidated to make this a dragon, to be honest at first, cause I was like, this thing is gonna look really interesting and weird. And I'm like, I don't know if it will really look 100% like a dragon. Um, but I think in the end we get there, it's like, kind of like a more cute little mythological beast, but it still has some dragon qualities to it. So not complaining. Uh, I mean, it's got a cute little dragon face and we got some wings and some talons and claws, but certain aspects about it, I uh, wasn't expecting to work as well as they did. So first off, I know that for this one, I picked a couple of themes to kind of put together in a, like at least for different parts of it. Um, it was a combination of the comments were just so close together and I also thought that the themes would work well together. For example, like the mane, having the Ida hair and the Haku uh, mane, I thought worked perfectly fine together. And I was like, yeah, let's just keep it. We'll just roll with that. Um, the one though that I don't think really merged as well, or I don't think I really even showed the other one was with the eyes. I know I said cuttlefish and ice demon eyes to start with. And you could argue that these look kind of icy demonish, especially when I get into the coloring, but uh, I mostly leaned on that cuttlefish aspect of the eyes, which by the way, I did not know 
That's what cuttlefish eyes look like. If I've seen them in the past, I just must have completely forgot what they look like because I'm like, wow, that is a weird eyeball and I really dig it. <laughs> so thank you for suggesting such weird things, guys. It was, it was really a pleasure to put this creature together. So for sure, I wanted to make him very feathery and fluffy to go along with the peacock feather skin. Um, and I wanted to make sure to highlight some of those diamonds from the diamond back rattlesnake as well. So I uh, kind of just roughly penciled in where I wanted to put those different diamonds and tried to make like sense of how I was going to color it while doing the line art. I think for, for this one, it was, I kind of knew what colors I was going for because the peacock has a lot of different colors. I mean, primarily with its face and throat and such, it's uh, in those blues and greens, depending on where the light's shining. And then it has a lot of like gorgeous brownish golds. And then a couple of those black, well, I guess they're more like dark brown gray feathers with little bits of white. So I had those colors in mind, but when I was doing the line art, I honestly was kind of panicking a bit because I was like, how am I gonna put those colors in these different places? And then I got the diamond back rattlesnake pattern to worry about, and I got this and that to worry about. So I was like, I don't know what this is gonna be. So uh, I just started in with just like a base blue color and I'm like, all right, we're just gonna start coloring and start feeling it out and we'll see how I feel about it and if it works out. So I, it, was, it was a process to say the least. I had to like stop and go and step away from this one and the later one um, just because coloring for these two was a little bit hard for me. I don't know if it was just... I don't know if I was being too perfectionist about it or like maybe I was just intimidated by the combination of things. I don't, I don't know. I can't explain. Um, but these were, these were good challenges, but also very intimidating. I don't know why they got like me so concerned. I don't, I don't know. They just really caught me off guard in terms of like, I, I, I was jumping into them being like, yeah, I can totally do this. But then when I started, it was like, Ooh, wow, these are hard. And Maybe it was a combination of like, maybe a little bit of burnout or like maybe I was just kind of dreading it because I thought it would be a little hard. I don't know, but I'm glad that I started them because if I didn't, I would have regretted it because I love how this guy turned out, even though he's kind of weird and quirky and not usually what I do. This was a lot of fun, especially when I started seeing the colors come together. Like as soon as I started layering in these greens with the blues after putting down the diamondback pattern in the colors of like the peacock, blackish gray, brownish feathers, I was like, oh yeah, here we go. And I was just really starting to hit a groove and finally feeling what this creature was gonna look like. So I was very pleased with this one. And honestly for this one and the next one, I would love to see your guys' interpretations of them. I know we have some base rudimentary like uh, components like, you know, everyone's gonna have the same horns and eyes and things. But I think even with that though, these could be interpreted in very different ways. Like there are very standard base looks or like, like I said, components for this, um, that will tie everyone together. But there's so many ways you could take this, like between the colors that you could pick from the peacock or how you do the patterning or like showing the pattern of, uh, the Diamondback Rattlesnake, I think there's some really cool ones. So please, if you guys do make this, please tag me on Instagram or Twitter. I would love to see your interpretations of these little beasties. Um, and then I also had a fun challenge of coloring these wings. I did something a little bit different than I usually do for translucent wings, and I think it worked really well. I just added like a layer on top, added a clipping mask, and then did white at different opacities. And oh, it just worked. It made the wings look so like paper thin and I just love how they turned out. I think that's like the most proud part of this piece for me. Um, well, between the body color, I was super digging those greens and those blues just really spoke to me. <laughs> but then those wings, I was like, oh yeah, Caitlin, good job. <laughs> so uh, even though this guy was a challenge and even though he was very outside my comfort zone and not something I am used to, or like I was a little intimidated, who knows what factors went into my hesitation with this. Even with all that in mind, I really love how he turned out and this was a really fun and weird creature to design for sure. All right, 
And there we have it. We have this crazy combination of a dragon. Like, I would never have tried this on my own with your guys' suggestions. Like, it looks really cool and I'm pretty happy with it. It kind of feels like a monster hunter monster and I don't know if that's because they do have a creature that has those giant bull horns, but like, it's very interesting. I don't know if it would be able to fly with the weight of those horns plus the dragonfly wings, but this was still pretty fun and I had a lot of fun experimenting with the color, kind of combining the patterning of the diamondback rattlesnake and the colors of a peacock. So, you know, it worked. It was really interesting, but we're not done. I thought we could do two this episode. So along with the dragon one, I thought, why not do a unicorn? Cause like I do a lot of dragons on this channel already. So I was like, a unicorn would be super fun for this as well. So let me walk you through what these suggestions were. So first off for the horn from Binging No Guns Life, <laughs> we have a cassowary horn. Then for the ears from Era, we have fox ears. The head from Quiet Deity, we have a deer, and specifically a type is the Muntjack deer. I think I totally butchered that name, but you know, I, I know what deer they're talking about. For the eyes from Hidden Tides, we have Bi-Eyed, so purple, think albinism or albino, I don't know if that's how you say albinism. Um, so purple and amber, which is gonna be an interesting combo for like these eyes. For the mane from Trix, we have Iridescent Galaxy Horse Mane. For the body from Margizilla, we have Bison, big and beefy, which is, woo, man, this is gonna be a big, thick boy. <laughs> no one submitted hooves for seven, so I'm just gonna basically say the Bison hooves are gonna carry over with the body, so I'm just gonna put my suggestion in there. Tail from Tyson, we have a tail of a Basilisk. The color from Eclipse Eagle, we have sunset colors. That's gonna be a really beautiful color palette. And then finally, for the special magical ability, we have the ability to summon bubbles from Aqua Bubbly. And that whole combo of all these things is just very interesting and I feel is just so diversely different. Uh, we have both the beefy, bigger body of a bison, but then it has the much softer ability to summon bubbles. I think that's pretty cool, and I think this is gonna be quite the challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and get some sketches going, and we're gonna figure out this creature together. All right, let's jump in to the unicorn now. So we finished the dragon, and now we're on to the unicorn, and I feel like I was just trying to be a glutton for punishment, trying to give myself more than one creature to do in a video, but you know, it was a fun challenge. And uh, I know in previous videos, I've talked about wanting to add backgrounds to my drawings, but for this one, I wanted the quantity of creatures more so than adding the background. So next time we will do a background because I can already hear the comments <laughs> asking me to do backgrounds. Um, but I just wanted to get two in this video and I'm really happy I asked for this unicorn one. So when I started the sketches, I already had generally an idea in mind because I was like, all right, I, I can picture it now with the bison and then I'll up the head of the deer so it's kind of more the proportions of the bison. And I kind of had an overall like general idea of where I wanted to go with this. So I knew that I wanted to really accentuate the cassowary horn because if you look at that creature, it has either like more of a ridge or a horn, I guess, depending on which one you find or see. Um, so I found one in particular, like one reference image that I was like, oh, this is a really cool and perfect horn. And so I wanted that to be like the big main focus. And I wanted that to be kind of like the rhino horn aspect. And I was feeling, I was feeling really confident about this one. Like I jumped in, I did the sketch, I did the line art and I was feeling good. Like the first creature, I was a little hesitant when I started up, but this one, I just was already hitting my stride with the line art and the drawing, but I didn't realize how much of an issue the potential coloring was going to be. So as you saw in the previous suggestions, uh, the request for coloring was going to be a sunset color palette, which I was like, okay, that's super cool. We're gonna get some yellows, some oranges, purples, um, some pinks. We got a lot of diversity in terms of a sunset color palette. And I was first thinking like, okay, we could do the galaxy main would be like a deeper purple and we could still use some of those sunset colors in the galaxy look of it. 
Um, and so I started with that because I knew right off the bat, I'm like, all right, I know what my galaxy, what I want it to look like in my brain. So I just went in, started layering the different, like, I don't, would you call them space clouds? <laughs> what would you call them? Like the big puffy looking clusters of stars and colors and things like they just look really cool. So I started with that cause I knew what I wanted for that and the look overall. Um, and after I started like, penciling in and blocking in the colors. I was like, all right, this is looking good, but I want the ends of the mane to be more wispy. So then I uh, went through with my smudge tool and just tried to like rough up the edges a bit. But then after that, that's where I hit my wall. Um, this one, the colors I think were the biggest challenge of this piece. Cause I was sitting here, I put like a base orange as like one of the main sunset colors when I started this creature, but I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I knew I wanted the horn to be kind of on the blues and greenish blues with some orange and yellow to match the cassowary horn that I found for reference. Um, but then from there, I'm like, well, what do I do with the body? Because the orange was feeling too bright. Um, so then I was like, what if we added some pink? And I'm like, no, that's not, I don't like that either. And I was like, okay, well, how about I just start painting the fox ears and I'll see how I feel because I was like, okay, we got orange, orange fox ear, it will work. So I painted it and I'm like, nope, don't like this either. And then I tried putting purple in place of the black and I'm like, nope, don't like that either. Um, so then I tried out just restarting with the base color. I tried like the fuchsia -y pink, I tried a dark blue and then I finally hit a purple and I'm like, all right, we're just gonna stay here <laughs> and I'm gonna try a couple of different colors. Um, cause I just wasn't liking those brighter colors. Uh, and that started working and I started really feeling this one again. Cause I just was like, not liking those bright oranges. So I was like, all right, this purple's working. I'm liking where we're going, but wow. It looks like seconds to you guys, but I was like sitting there mowing over it. And I kept cutting out, like I've cut out parts of this video. So you don't see me just like futzing back and forth with so many different colors. Cause wow, that. That was what was the hardest part of this, was just that color palette. And then the eyes too, uh, The I looked up reference for like the albino like eyes with the purple and the amber. And I was like, I think I got it. So I like how the eyes look. I don't know if they 100% hit the request, but they're really striking against that darker purple. And I think it works really well with that. And so after I finally got the base purple blocked in, I wanted to add some more like texture to that fur. Um, whenever I picture buffalo like hide and fur, I just think about um, their back like up by their, well, I guess not their shoulders, but like the, the hump of their back is always covered in this really thick, fluffy looking brown fur. Um, and I was like, I kind of want to convey that thick fluffiness because it's usually the front half of it. Um, the back legs are usually, uh, I don't know if they're bare. I don't think they're like bare skin, but it's very, um, short fur compared to like that front half of the beast. So I was like, I really want to convey that fluffiness. And I think I finally hit that too with the clumping of those lighter colors and some of the purples and the dark colors. Um, at least for me, I think it looks really fluffy and poofy in the front and like a little bit thinner hair or even like reptilian to go into the basilisk tail. Like it looks more like skin or, um, you know, not covered in fluffy fur. At this point, I thought I was done, but then I totally forgot about the ability to summon bubbles. <laughs> I completely forgot about the magic ability. And I'm like, oh no, I gotta go back and paint this. So I found some bubble brushes online because I was like, oh, this would help like just adding in some bubbles, but I did not like their effects. I think those bubble brushes are meant for when you put them on like a colored sea background, they work well for that. So I was like, I'm just gonna color some in because I wanted them to also be the color of the sunset. I just imagined these really beautiful purples and pinks and blues in terms of the bubbles and maybe some oranges. Like that's that's where my brain was with the bubbles. Um, and so I wanted them coming out of the tip of the horn and then wrapping around the body. And I love how the bubbles turned out. I think they're super cute and adorable and not what I would expect with this creature, but I love them all the same.
All right, there we go. We are all done with this unicorn. And I have to say out of the two from today, I think this one's my favorite. Like I love both of them, but I think this one turned out really, really cool. And it really pushed me to my limit, especially during my coloring. I don't know if you guys saw during the speed paint, but I was really struggling trying to figure out what colors to do because sunset colors, it does leave you quite a variety in the palette, but it was just very hard to figure out how I want to do it. And I think it turned out really great. I am super, super happy with this creature. So thank you all again so much for your suggestions on Twitter. Without you guys, these monsters wouldn't have been a thing. And this was a really fun challenge just to like basically take a complete random amalgamation of ideas and like mash them together to create these creatures. I mean, I would consider this a monster mash. I know it's not exactly a monster mash because I'm not doing my usual format, but I'm gonna consider this a monster mash. And it was fun being able to do two in this video. So if you guys liked this video, I'd really appreciate a like. Comment down below if you have any other ideas of challenges like this you would like me to try. And uh, if you guys wanna try this challenge, I have both of these on my Twitter. You can like download the picture, post it on your social medias, try to get some people from the community to give you some ideas. And it's a really fun challenge. It really like makes you work your creative side of your brain. And if you guys are new here and you found my channel through this video, please hit that subscribe button, join our community of nerdy monster lovers and dragon enthusiasts. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video here. But either way, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody. I'd like to take a second to thank all my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are all so amazing. Thank you so much for the support. If you guys would like to get some behind the scenes goodies, some sketch postcards, a monthly sticker or print, check out my Patreon. And again, thank you guys so much for stopping by and I'll see you all next time. Bye everybody.